So let's speak before we go to that uh, use case, let's speak about the steps. So the negation configuration steps, the first step is in AAA, you cannot configure any kind of AAA commands before you enable or start the AAA process on the iOS. That's going to be done via AA new model command. It's AA new model because the AA old model was using, uh, let's say, because by default I'm using AA old model, which means I cannot speak with TACAX or radio servers to call it that way. So that uh, b with the with the built-in default model, I cannot speak with a, with a TACAX server or with a radio server. So that's the old model or the built-in model. So if I want to be able to communicate for AAA scopes with a TACAX or radio server, I gotta say a new model. This allows me to configure the TACAX server and a radio server. So in most codes, if you don't enable AAA, you're not going to be even you're not going to you're not even going to be um, allowed by the router to configure the TACAC server or the radio server, because as I was saying, by default the code runs in the AAA old model, which you can which means for authentication purposes you cannot use TACAX or radius. You can only use local authentication. So the command makes sense. It's going to be a new model. Once I have defined that, I'm going to be uh, allowed to configure the TACAC server with which I want to communicate. Now, it's going to be a lot of uh, variations. Uh, so the method to configure a radius, uh, the, the configuration options to define a radius server or TACAC server is like two or four of those. It's not a scope of the CCNA uh, blueprint. I'm going to use the oldest one, the, uh, let's say the one which is not most commonly used but the oldest one which everybody should be aware of even though technically speaking this is no longer recommended because it's going to be aged out by Cisco because whatever the uh, TACAX plus protocol or radius, radius protocol support uh, what, so all of the new features that are going to be um, let's say uh, added by Cisco for TACAX plus and radius for a long time ago those have been uh, have, have been made available only if you choose to define a TACAX or radius server using the new methods. I'm going to use the old method which is going to be a global configuration in conf configure mode saying TACAX server host the IP address of the TACAX server and followed by a key and then what is the key? And that key has to be identically configured on both the uh, the authenticator, like the router in my case, and the ACS server or the TACAC server. Because that key, that shared secret key, is going to be used by the authenticator to encrypt the payload of the packet and by the uh, server to decrypt the payload of the, of the packet. So the packet payload is not actually encrypted with that key I'm configuring in there. That key is being used as part of a specific MD5 implementation in order to actually encrypt the packet. So once I have defined a new model, I'm then uh, allowed, uh, I have the option to define a TACAX or radio server, and then I go ahead and configure the authentication. And as we said it before, we have two types of authentications, login and enable. And there we go, the commands are AA authentication, login or enable. And then next, what, what comes up next is going to be the list name. Where the list name can be either a, the keyword of default or a specific list name that you get to choose. Now, I, I have added in, on the slides the default keyword only on the authentication enable uh, method or list because iOS doesn't allow you to configure named list for enable authentication. But you can configure name list for login authentication. Now, the main difference between a default list and a non-default list which has a name is that the non-default list are not by default enforced by the router. So what that means is, as you're going to see, if, you, if, if for more details, look in the CCNA security bootcamp class. So if you define the list as default, uh, 
then that's going to by default enforce authentication as that list states for all uh, methods of getting access to the router. Like what that means is that if I'm going to say a authentication list default, then this list is going to define how do I want to authenticate login request to the router. Because after the list name, I'm going to configure the method, which in my case is going to be via TACAX Plus. So the list name uh, is going to tell the router if the, if the authentication is, is applied or not by default. And the method is going to tell the router how do you want me to authenticate uh, the login, the login, uh, the, the user's login. What is the method? And the method is going to be TACAX Plus or radius or local or multiple methods can be configured for fallback purposes. So in a way, just to repeat that, if you use the default list, you don't have to enforce that around. So if you use the default list, it means that from that point on, for example, all VTI access will be enforced to authenticate as defined in the login and enable list. That's only if you use the default list name. If you don't use the default list name and you use a specific name, like a, whatever the name is that you want, then you have to apply that list on the VTI lines or on the console, depending how do you want that list, where do you want that list to be enforced. So if you don't use the default list name, you got to apply that list uh, to the VTI lights or to the console or to whatever, uh, let's say, uh, location that you want to enforce authentication for uh, users connecting to the router for managing it. So if I want, if I'm not going to use the default list, that means I got to go for on the VTI lines and apply the list, login authentication and the list name. If I would want console access to be authenticated in the same way as define the list, I'd say line console zero and then apply the list. If I want also HTTP access or HTTPS access to be uh, enforced authentication wise as configured on the list, then I have to also go and configure HTTP and HTTPS access so that that list is being enforced on the router. That's only if you use a non-default list. If you use a default list, then that list is going to by default enforce authentication on the console and on the VTI lines as configured uh, with the method in there. Let's see if there are any questions to make sure that this was clear enough. Okay, no yet, not yet. Authorization configuration steps. So once I have configured your authentication, and the user will be able to successfully authenticate, then I may want to provide also authorization. So we have two types of authorizations, exec and commands. And there we go, you have two types of authorization lists. One is going to be a authorization exec, one is going to be a authorization commands. Now the authorization exec uh, command is going to likewise, you have to define a list name, the same thing, you can use the default keyword or you can use a named uh, list. And then you define the method, which likewise you can configure one or multiple methods. I'm going to use TACAX and local as fallback. And then authorization commands. If I optionally want to do also command authorization, then I'm going to specify for which privilege level do I want to do command authorization. And I have to specify likewise a list name, default or non-default, and the method which is going to be likewise via TACAX Plus or via local or both of them to have redundancy. Now, even if you enable the authorization, configure the authorization lists of exec and commands, by default, those will not be enforced for configure mode commands. So if you say a authorization commands for level 15 and you define the list name of whatever and then via TACAX, then that's gonna, the, the router at that point is going to enforce authorization of all privilege level 15 commands, but only if those commands are typed in from exec mode, not from config mode. So if you want privilege level 15 commands to be also authorized uh, via TACAX Plus, because you have defined the authorization of commands via TACAX Plus, then you have to also put that specific command in there. So without the A authorization config commands, only 
exec level commands of this of the configure privilege level are going to be authorized via TACX plus. And for, uh, for safety reasons, by default, none of the authorization lists apply for console access. That's as a safety mechanism to make sure that as you configure the authorization on the router, you don't lose access to the router at the console. But if you want your list to also be applicable to console access, so users accessing the router via the console should also obey to the authorization as configured, then you also have to put the command a authorization console. That's that you have to be careful with that command because you can easily if you if uh, you can easily lock yourself out of the router, you can easily lock yourself out of the router with that command. If you're not experienced enough and you don't know the the end-to-end -end logic of how this works, and then like in the, authentic the authentication uh, step, if you have used uh, non-default lists and you want uh, authorization to happen as configured for VTI line access, then you go ahead and add a line VTI uh, line VTI zero four or whatever number of lines you want. You go and you apply both the authorization exec and authorization commands list in there. So it's the same process. Accounting-wise, likewise, there is no fallback method of accounting, as I was saying. Uh, for from the accounting point of view, you can only do remote accounting, which means you're gonna you can account for either exec uh, level or for commands of specific privilege levels. So it's the same command format, A accounting, and I want to send accounting recourse to TACAX for exec access or for commands uh, being typed in of a specific privilege level as configured in there. Likewise, if you have used a non-default list, you have used name list, then you have to apply the accounting list to the desired line. If you want a VTI line access, uh, so if you want any commands typed in uh, at the VTI lines to be accounted for via TACAX, then you have to apply the accounting uh, lists on VTI lines with uh, those commands in there. So now, since we're here, if you followed up with the three, with the AA model we, where we have three, let's say, three entities, and then you follow, followed up on the authentication options, authorization options, and what we're trying to do, then all of these commands actually make sense. As I was saying, and, and, and as you're gonna progress in your, in, your, in your career, if you actually pay attention to what are then in this class, for example, to take this example, to how technology works and what is the scope of the AA, what are the building blocks, what can you do, and why you can do those things, and then you look at the configuration options, the commands make sense. You don't have to memorize them. Like for me, it makes sense that if I want to define a accounting method for exec, the command is AA accounting exec, or AA accounting commands, or AA authentication login, or AA authentication enabled. So just by thinking of what, about what you're trying to do, even if you don't know the command, of course you, have, you, you, st you still have to have seen the command at least once, but then you don't have to remember the command. Just as long as you know how technology works and what you want to do, then the command should be, let's say, like you would have built it. Because if you ask me, I would have built the, the command structure the same way. There is no other easier way and better way to define the commands to match the technology that I'm trying to implement than the way Cisco did. It's plain and simple. Now, verification steps. You can verify the TACAX server functionality or connectivity. So show TACAX or show a server detailed. There's one more command which I forgot to type in here, which is going to be the show privilege level. So when the user is going to be connected to a network device and has been granted a specific privilege level, you would want to verify what the level is with the show privilege level command. We're going to see that in a couple. And then you want to verify the A lists if, if the lists have been defined appropriately, which show A method list, method list all. And optionally, before you even connect to the device to, to get authenticated, 
you can actually, as long as you have configured TACAX integration between the router and the TACAX server, then you can use the command test AA group TACAX plus, and then you type in the username and password and use the legacy keyword. It's a long discussion why. Let's keep it simple. You use that command. And then as, as long as the TACAX configuration is correctly done on both the server ACS and on the router, and as long as, of course, the TACAX server has been provisioned with that username and password, then you're going to get a authentication succeeded message back. So at that point, you know that authentication should work.